Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy 31. Tonight. People don't know much about the book of Deuteronomy, but the Deuteronomy is a book of review. It's, it's actually what it entails. You'll see that uh, Moses, as he gave this book, he reviewed what God had done for him and leading him out of children, uh, leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. And then he'll, you'll notice that he reviewed a lot about the, the law, and and then he talked about the blessings and the cursings that God would get. Um, um, he, uh, that God would do if you followed him, he'd bless you. If you didn't, and he would curse uh, the children of Israel. And uh, and so we, we see that uh, God was uh, reviewing a lot about what was going on uh, up till uh, that up to that point in Israel's history. Uh, Deuteronomy 31. Tonight our message is going to be entitled Four Great Promises to God's People. So we'll begin reading in verse 1. It says, And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. And he said unto them, I am a hundred and twenty years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua... He shall go over before thee, as the Lord has said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon and to Og, king of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. So as we find here, uh, Moses is charging the children of Israel. You're going to go into the land of Canaan. Joshua's going to be your leader. I can't go. Remember, we mentioned we actually mentioned this this morning in passing why uh, Moses couldn't go into the uh, uh, promised land because he failed to obey God and, and trust God uh, there when he, um, God told him to speak to the rock for water and he smote the rock and the water came out and, and God was faithful to give him water but Moses had been uh, disobedient to the Lord and Moses, uh, God told Moses that uh, he wasn't going into the <clears throat> land of Canaan. But um, as, as we see here, Moses was charging them. He said, look, you're going to go in there. You're going to fight some battles. And I want you to uh, know that God's going to take care of you. Joshua's going to be your leader, and he's going to take care of you. And then he pointed to the past. Remember, this is a book of review, right? He said, it's, it just as God uh, had, uh, took care of uh, uh, Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and, uh, you know, we don't have time to go into that, how big... Uh, that was a feat, how, how big a feat this was. Uh, defeating these kings and the children of Israel not being prepared for war, but yet God defeated these kings. And, and um, uh, this is a actually a, a, a big thing here. In fact, um, you find it in, in, in written in the Psalms about when God took care of, of uh, Og and, and Sihon. And uh, so that was, a, that was a big deal. And so right now, Moses is reviewing. He said, just like God took care of those kings and those armies, he's going to take care of you and go in. And then, he, and then in verse 8, he gives them some promises. And we're going to actually look at these promises again. 
The title of the message is Four Great Promises uh, to God's People. First of all, we see God goes before us. God goes before us. It says in the Lord, He it is that doth go before thee. And I'm thankful that we have God's protection in our lives and God will take care of us. We notice that God went before them. As Moses gave this promise, we actually see that this promise came to pass. Turn over to Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. Now what is Joshua chapter 2 about? That's when the children of Israel are going into Canaan. Are going in the promise. The first few chapters there. Well, actually Joshua, uh, the book of Joshua is about the children of Israel going in the promised land and um, uh, warring and then they're dividing the land out among them. And so uh, we notice that God did go before them. Joshua chapter 2 beginning in verse 8. And before they were laid down, she came up uh, <clears throat> she came up unto them upon the roof, and she said unto the men. Now, we're talking about Rahab, right? Okay? Uh, we notice that uh, two spies that came into the uh, land, and they're going to spy out the land, and uh, they came to Jericho, and they're looking at it. They're going to uh, look in uh, Jericho and spy it out, and uh, they had to hide, and they went to Rahab. She was a what? She was a harlot. And they went, and they hid, and she hid them. And uh, so here she's talking to these spies, okay? Uh, verse 9. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. What does that mean? That means God brought fear to them. Because they saw what had happened uh, when Israel fought Sihon and Og. They saw what happened, and it brought fear in them. Now they're coming to, to, to Jericho, and, and they're, they're scared. Look at verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. They heard about what God had been doing when you came out of Egypt and what you did in the two kings of the Amorites. That's, uh, uh, and there it is that uh, they were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Here's a harlot that's, that's giving glory to God for what would have been done. You know why? Because fear had been struck in those people. Fear had, had come in those people's lives and gripped their life. So they, they, they heard and they saw what had happened to Sihon and Og. And uh, now, you know, all they were doing was they were just hoping against hope that Israel would come their way. And guess what? They did. Now they're camped out uh, against Jericho, and they're scared. They're scared out of their minds. They don't know what to do. It says that their uh, terror has fallen upon us, and, and, all, and all the inhabitants of the land faint. Because of you. And so here's what I see. I see that God is working ahead. Right? God is going before. God knows what they need uh, in order for this battle to happen. And you know what? What happened there in Joshua? When they came into Jericho, they began to march around that city. Right? I don't think the people in Jericho were laughing. I think they were scared to death. They're marching around the city for six days and nothing happened. They're probably, I mean, I believe it probably shook fear, put, brought more fear in. What in the world is, is going to happen here? And then on the seventh day, <clears throat> God takes care of them and, that, and wipes that city out. Listen, God went before them. God took care of them just like he had promised. But Romans 8.28 says this, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. We know that God uh, works in, in our behalf because we're His children. Even though bad things happen to us, God uses those things and turns them around for good. Romans 8.14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We're God's children, and God has uh, uh, making, uh, God is taking care of us. 
Psalm 139. I like this. Verses 1 through 10. I'm going to read these. You can turn there in Psalm 139 if you like. Psalm 139, verse 1. O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, Thou knowest it all together. Thou hast set me behind and before, and laid Thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from Thy Spirit, or whither shall I flee from Thy presence? If I ascend up to heaven, Thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, Thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. What do I see there? I see God going before me. There's not a place that I can go. God hadn't already been there. So, here's one, one great promise to God's people. God will go before you. God will take care of you. But then, also look at number two. He will not only go before us, but He will also be with us. Look again in verse 8. And the Lord, He it is that doth go before thee, He will be with thee. I'm thankful that God's with us. Amen. John 14, 20 says this, And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Now, we know that God was with His people, right? The Bible teaches us that as He led the children of Israel out of Egypt, that He led them by a, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God's presence was always with them. They built the Ark of the Covenant, and that Ark of the Covenant was a representation of God's presence. And when, when they offered sacrifices uh, for their sin, they would offer it there on the mercy seat on top of the Ark of the Covenant. And that's where God's presence would come down and accept that offering. God was with His people. And remember, when they went into Jericho, what did they have with them before they walked over the Jordan River? What did they have? The, the priests carried the Ark of the Covenant right into the midst of the river uh, Jordan. As they stepped in at the water, uh, the water receded. The water split. They walked over on dry ground. And the priests were standing right there in the midst of the river with the presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant of God. And they walked across dry land because God was with them. Listen, <clears throat> you may encounter an obstacle in your life like the River Jordan. You may think that it's too wide, it's too deep to cross, but if you're with God, or, if, or rather I should say, if God's with you and God's given you grace and power, you can make it across any obstacle because God will be with you. Romans 8, 38 and 39, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So God is with us and nobody can separate us. Listen, you can, and the martyrs even said it. Uh, you know, the times during the Reformation and when the martyrs, uh, were, when, when they were being martyred, they would say, listen, uh, you can't separate, you can't take God out of my heart. You can't take God away from me. God give them strength in their heart to stand and, and be courageous in the midst of persecution. God's divine presence, we see it in the pilgrimage of life. Genesis 28, 15. God said, He said, And behold, I am with thee. It's talking to Jacob there. And I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Genesis 31, 3. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return to the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. Exodus 3, 12. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, talking, God talking to Moses there. And this shall be a token unto thee, 
that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. God said, hey, I'm going to be with you. Now, the Bible teaches us in the New Testament that God has given us the earnest of His Spirit. What's He saying? He's given us a piece of Him. He's, he, he dwells in our hearts. He can never be separated from us. So God's presence also affords us rest. It gives us rest. Exodus 33, 14. And He said, My presence shall go with thee, talking to Moses there, and I will give thee rest. God's presence gives us courage in life's battles. Deuteronomy 20, verse 1. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and see his horses and chariots and people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. He said, hey, you don't have to be afraid of them, because I'm going to be with you. God's presence gives us comfort in trials. Isaiah 43, 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle thee. Because God's with us and He helps us. And we notice that God's presence gives us, uh, uh, is, is assured to the smallest assembly of believers. Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I'm in the midst of them. And we see that God's presence is with us until the end. We notice in Matthew 28, 19, He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. <laughs> I like that. He amened himself, you know. The amen amen himself. I mean, like, look at this. Listen, God is with us. His children, he's with us to the end of the world. Listen, it don't matter what happens out there. It don't matter who's riding in the streets. It don't matter what kind of plague is in our land today. God is with us to the end, amen. Thank God for that. Hey, I thank God for that. Listen, I love you, and I'm glad we have friends in this earth. I'm glad we have family. I'm glad we got people to love and to help with your people that we can call on if we need them. I'm thankful for all that. But listen, you're not going to be with me to the end. I mean, you may be. I mean, you know, I know if we're persecuted or something, we might be together. What I mean is, is that God is with us. God is in our hearts, and He will be with us to the end. He'll be there at the end. Amen? Listen, when I take my last breath in this earth, and I wake up in glory, who's going to be there? He's going to be there. Why? Because he's been with me to the end on this life, and it'll be just the beginning over there, and he'll be with us forever. Amen. Thank God for that. So God goes before us. He will be with us. And then thirdly, we see he will not fail thee. He will not fail thee. Look again in verse 8. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. You know, I should suspect that I shouldn't have to spend a whole lot of time on this and the fact that God just doesn't fail in anything. God's never failed anything. I can't stand people that try to make jokes on the fact that God messed something up in this world. I'm to tell you something. God's all-powerful God. He's all-wise. He's all-knowing. He's not the old man upstairs, by the way. He is God in heaven above. He's your creator. He created the heavens and the earth. He didn't mess anything up. In fact, if you read the book of Genesis, the Bible says that he did everything and he said it was good. The only thing that's messed up in this world is what man has done to mess it up. And that's the truth. You read Genesis chapter 12. What God? It's not God's fault that uh, there's evil in this world. It's man's fault for bringing sin in this world and disobeying God. God told Adam and Eve, He said, The day that you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that day you'll surely die. God, God said, There'll be death in this world if you disobey me. But God had made everything good. Thank God for that. He won't fail. He never fails. 
Psalm 28, verse 1, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. And then in verse 6 and 7 of Psalm 28, he said, Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart grace, greatly rejoices, <laughs> greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. He said, I cried unto God, and he was my help. In other words, the psalmist there is saying, God didn't fail me. Psalm 40, 17. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no terror, oh my God. You see the psalmist, uh, you see this actually many places in the, in the psalms where they are trusting in God. Why? Because they know that God will never fail. Turn to Psalm 62. Psalm 62. We see this again where they are just trusting in God because God, listen, I, there's not, I, 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 don't, I don't know that you can find a place in the Bible where somebody just thought that God would fail. I, I don't know. I mean, I never really thought about studying that out. I know where men at times have lack of faith, but we always see where God comes through and, and God is faithful to His promises. Psalm 62, beginning in verse 5. My soul, wait thou only upon God. And then look at what he says here. For my expectation is from him. Listen, he didn't say, I was trusting in my friend to come through for me. He wasn't saying, I was expecting so and so to help me. That's not what he's saying. He says, my expectation is from God. And the greatest thing that you'll learn in this life is that you trust no man, but you trust God. You put your faith and trust in Him, and He will take care of you. He will not fail you. Listen, if you trust in Him for salvation, you're trusting in Him to get you to heaven. Your expectation is from Him. Verse 6, He only is my rock and my salvation. I believe He just said what I said right there. He trusted in God for salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us, Selah. You know what he's saying there? You can trust God. Why? Because He'll never fail you. He, he hasn't failed one time. Not one time. Not one time have you said God's messed up. Now, I know that there's been times people have been in some kind of turmoil, some kind of trouble, some kind of disappointment, and they blame God for it. But they're wrong. Just because you blame God for something doesn't mean you're right about it. God does everything right. He does everything well and good. You want to know why I know that? Because the Bible says so. The Bible says in Psalm 100, The Lord is good, and His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. You know a God like that? You know any other God like that? You know anybody else like that? He's good. He's merciful, and He's truthful. You know anybody else like that? I don't. Listen, our God never fails. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He won't fail you. Listen, I know we're facing tribulation in our time right now, right? I know that we're facing trouble. Well, I mean, we have uh, disease right now going on. We have uh, rioters, people rioting. We have all kinds of stuff. I hadn't heard what the next... Uh, you know, crisis is going to be yet. But listen, this year, 2020, has been a year to remember, right? Not for what's good, but for what's going on in our lives. But listen, he said, I don't want you to worry about all that stuff. Why? Because I've overcome the world. And I'm never going to fail. So God goes before us. He will be with us. He will not fail us. And then last of all, He will not forsake us. He will not forsake us. Look in, again, verse 8. We'll read the, uh, read the whole verse again. And the Lord 
He it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. And then he just puts an extra on there. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. Listen. I think we ought to be able to face anything in this life. You know what? There's been Christians that's come and gone before us. That's faced a lot harder things than we've ever faced. But you know, but you know what? They've been able to get through. You know why? Because they had faith in God. And God gave them strength and courage and grace to go through whatever. You know what? I believe that they realized these promises was for them as well. I believe they realized that God went before them, He was with them, and He didn't fail them, neither would He forsake them. Listen, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For He has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. He's never going to leave us. Listen, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He's never going to leave you. Now, as we close tonight, I want you to think about this. Psalm 116, verse 12, it says this. It says, What shall I render to the Lord for all His benefits toward me? Verse 16, it says this. O Lord, truly I am Thy servant. I am Thy servant, and the son of Thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. The psalmist there, he said, what am I going to give back to God for all that He's done for me? I, everything God's been to me, what am I going to do? He said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve. Right here tonight, we got four great promises for God's people. What are you going to do? What are you going to do for all the things that He's given you? For all these benefits. Hey, if all we had from God was just these four promises, that'd be enough. To serve Him for all eternity. What? And so I think the challenge tonight is, is as we look at these promises, that we have a sense of obligation in our lives. That as we just, as we just read there in Deuteronomy 31, we read, we, uh, we read verse 5, And the Lord shall give them up before your face. And then He says, That you may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. You see, God doesn't give us promises just so we can do whatever we want to do. He gives us promises to enable us to follow His commands. So, you, you see, we have great promises, but with those promises come great responsibility. God doesn't just give us things to benefit us for no reason at all. It's so that we can serve Him and follow His commandments. So, how are you tonight? Are you following the Lord's commandments? Are you living for Him? Are you doing what He asks of you? And are you obeying Him? And are you trusting in Him to take care of you? Let's pray. Father.